a closer look at our top stories. I'm joined by our guest, sports analyst Ade Oladipo. Hello, my man. How are you doing? Good to be here. Good, good, good to be. have you here, my friend. Um, we've got to start off with Juventus. That is some piece of business they've done today, isn't it? It is. I was actually shocked, to be honest. Um, I'm shocked that Atletico Madrid let him go. For real? Yeah, it's not like they've got a bundle of strikers. I mean, they've got Torres there, but he's not the same Torres as he was a few years ago. So I'm shocked they let him go. But for Juventus, they're going to look at it as we need to build on what we did last season. They won the double, and they've done very well against Barcelona in the Champions League final as well. I think you mentioned they're probably going to lose Tevez. You know, there's a lot of holes to fill. Pirlo's going to New York, probably. Yeah. And Pogba, we're not Pogba? quite he's, sure what's going on as well. He's going somewhere, hasn't he's he? He's going to be going as well. So they've got Kadira to replace Pogba. And I think they're probably going to get a couple more signings as well. I mean, is it fair to say that the way they're doing their business mm. is actually, if you were a Premier League club or, a, frankly, a club from any other league, yeah. that's the example. Yeah. You buy first mm. before you sell your key assets because then you know the replacement's there. It's not a case of being held to ransom because everyone knows you need a striker. Yeah. You've got Carlos Tevez. He's happy. Yeah. He's terrific. Mm. No, actually, we bought someone else. Now you can have him. You're, you're, surely that's the way to do it. You're right. And not just that, they've not spoke about these signings. There's never, there's never even been rumours about Kadira going to Juventus or Mandzukic going to Juventus. They've kept it quiet. They've done their business early. And they've got the players they want. I mean, they've not been held to ransom with stupid fees as well. Juventus have the money. I mean, they got to the Champions League final, so they've sure. got money. But they've signed these signings, and they've signed them for very good money. And they're still going to get the Pogba money. He's probably, if he does go, he's probably going to go in the region of 60 to 70 million. So they've got a lot more money to spend in the market as well. I mean, it's getting ridiculous right now. I mean, Raheem Sterling, 50 million. So you, you're hearing that, all these that ridiculous one, that one numbers. really does my sweet. I can't understand <laughs> that one. You're hearing all these numbers. But I guess Pogba has shown himself, other than Raheem Sterling, in the Champions League final... He starts for France all the time now, and France have a very good squad at the moment. And he's playing a lot of games, and he's doing very well in a, in a new league uh, to him. He left Man United early. Everyone said, why is he doing that? He's gone to Juventus, he established himself. So, yes, he's not worth 70 million, but he's worth a hell of a lot. He's worth 30, 40 million, but I guess the going rate right now for a young player is that kind of money, and he's going to go for it. Players like Kadira, Mandzukic today, they've obviously gone to Juventus mm. from possibly bigger clubs. Yeah. What's the draw of Juventus? Is it just because they seem to be on a trajectory of success right now? Or is it because, you know what, shop window, opportunity to improve? Why would you go to Juventus at this point in time? I is think the old lady awake again? It, it, good, that's a good saying, that is there. Right? <laughs> I think it's a bit of both. Y yes, um, look, you know, uh, Italian football, particularly Juventus, are really riding high at the moment. But if you look at Kadira, especially Mandzukic as well, they didn't play a lot of games last season. Kadira didn't play hardly any. Now, I know you've been following the Women's World Cup very closely, so I think we should talk about some big games today. The USA are looking unstoppable, aren't they? They are, but they had a bit of help in hand as well, let's not yeah, forget. At 0-0, right. you know, I mean, sorry, at 0-0, you know, um, sorry, at 11 against 11, it was 0-0 until the sending off. Colombia done very well against France in the group stage before, so Colombia is always going to be a dangerous game. But USA are probably the ranked, what, number one or two in the world for a reason, and they showed that experience as well. I think the average cap of their team was like 79 caps, so they've got experience in their team as well, and I think they are, if not the clear favourites, one of the favourites to go on and win the tournament. They're good to watch. I enjoy watching the USA because they've got a quite nice, fluid style. Mm. As for England, yeah. one of the best goals from a defender I have ever seen scored by anyone from yeah. Young Miss Bronze. I mean, it was just... It was a thunder blaster, wasn't it? Honestly, it was. It reminded me of a goal that uh, Nigel Winterburn scored for Arsenal many, many years back. <laughs> where, honestly, it's just like, it, it hit it and, and that was it. No goalkeeper in the world is going to save that man or woman. It was that good. Yeah. Um, England, uh, you know, they're taking their chances. He's used all the players in the squad, so everyone's had a rotation, a bit of feel for the World Cup now. And you never know. I think Canada is a good draw. Yes, they're the host city, but they're not Germany, they're not France, they're not yeah. the USA. Yeah. So England will look at that game and think, we've got a chance here. It's quarterfinals, it's knockout rounds, anything can happen. England don't have a good record in knockouts, but that's men's football. Hopefully the ladies' football can change it. Let's, hope, let's keep our fingers crossed. Now, I've got to talk to you about what I consider, at least in the Premier League, to probably be the greatest transfer that's going to happen yeah. this season. I mean, my goodness, this is an astonishing transfer, isn't it? This is the hole that Arsenal have been missing. Very much so. I mean, Mourinho must be having sleepless nights about this one. Mm. He's definitely not sanctioned this move. It's been Roman Abramovich that said, yeah, let him go, and Arsenal have come in. Arsenal for years have had that problem. Since David Seaman, really, they haven't replaced him. Yeah. You know, they've tried Fabianski, they've tried Chesney. Ospina's done, a well, you know, done okay this season. But you look at the top teams in the Premiership, you know, you look at Courtois, you look at David De Gea, you look at um, even Lloris, really. Every team's got a real top, top keeper. Arsenal don't have that. With Peter Cech, they've definitely got that. It reminds me a bit of the Man United move when they got Edwin van der Sar a few seasons ago, an experienced goalkeeper, yeah. who everyone thought was maybe a bit past his prime, but went on for many years. Came in and I phenomenal. think it's exactly like that. And I think 11 million is still for Peter Cech. Is he as good as he was four or five years ago? Probably not. 
but he's still a very, very good goalkeeper. He's as good as Arsenal have ever had. And that's the I difference, agree. isn't it? I mean, he's, he's an incredible... He's a voice in the dressing room. Mm. He's won everything there is to win domestically. Yeah. And he's also a major a major feature of Chelsea's recent history. Yeah. I mean, that's a real coup for Arsenal, it, it seems is. to me, anyway. Arsenal are filling holes at the moment. We spoke about Juventus filling holes. Arsenal are doing that. If Arsenal kind of identified the problems they have this season, it was a goalkeeper, probably a defender, and maybe a striker as well. They've got one out there now, and one that didn't cost very much as well. So two more players for them. Maybe a holding midfielder, a striker and a defender. And Arsenal will really be up there for the title challenge this season. Interesting stuff. Thank you, Ade. We'll be back with you again in the second half. Uh, for a closer look at our top stories, I'm joined by our guest, sports analyst, Ade Oladipo. Ade, welcome back. Um, a quick one about Paris. Mm. They've bid and bid and bid and been knocked back on three separate occasions now. Yeah. Is it going to be fourth time lucky for them, do you think? Yeah, we normally say third time lucky, but I think it will be fourth time lucky for them. They missed out on the 2012 games when they were favourites to win in, I think, Britain sort of pipped it at the time. Sorry, London picked them at the time. I think Paris is one of those cities who deserve a game. Um, you think of all the major cities in the world and yeah. think Paris, don't you? So it's been 100 years. They can definitely host them. They've definitely got the sporting capabilities. You always want a host nation to have, if you like, uh, people, athletes that can win gold medals and think France definitely have that. So... It'd be nice, and for us it's easy to get to, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. An hour on a Eurostar, exactly. we're there, so it's good. Jump on the train and we're set. I mean, you actually feel there's something quite romantic about the fact that it's been 100 years in between it, so I hope they get it. So do I. I hope so as well, and you think they financially can afford it as well. You've got a lot of these countries that bid for it, or cities that bid for it, and you kind of feel like it destabilises the whole country. You think Paris are able to do it. It will be good, and like you say, we're, we're minutes away from it, so good for us as well. They've also got the infrastructure, haven't they? They're, mm. they're one of these countries that they love their sport. You mm. know the French are sports mad. I mean, you go over there and it's on every channel all the time. You can yeah. choose whatever you want from the sport. And athletically, like you say, they've got plenty of people that you think, actually, they're youth programmes as well. If they knew they were hosting the Olympics, the amount they'd put into youth development so that they would have some potential champions in yeah. time for the for the Olympic Games when they could host it. I mean, it would be phenomenal. And just the legacy after. Uh, you've seen the legacy here of, after 2020. 12 and it's a lot of people thought that was going to sort of die and go and it's not it's carried on it's built on it's built on and you think that could happen with France as well I've been to France myself and there's a lot of poverty in there and you feel like just something like the Olympic Games could boost the whole area and you hopefully it could make sort of future sportsmen and sports stars for years to come and I think it'll be good 2024 something to look forward to for the youths and you hopefully they can take that on board and you never know we could be seeing young people now be winning gold medals in the Olympics. So yeah. it's, a great, it's a great story. I love it. I love it when dreams come true for sportsmen. It's, it's brilliant. Um, let's talk about Wimbledon because, I mean, it's the best tennis tournament of the year and love it's it. so close now. It is, it is brilliant. Nice, no, exciting time for Wimbledon. You get all the other grand slams and all, all the tennis stars are open and saying, this is the one we want to win. This is the traditional one. I, I can't wait for it. It's open as it's ever been. Maybe not on the ladies' side, um, yeah. with Serena Williams being so dominant in that, but the men's side, I think, is as open as it's been for the last 10, 15 years. I mean, it's mad, isn't it? We've, we've got all these guys. They, they keep to sort of, they keep swapping. Not well, number one. Mm. That's pretty much been established for a while now as Djokovic. Yeah. But number two, number three, they keep almost like flip-flopping around, don't they? It's like, who's going to be it this week? Because there is so much talent. Even Grand Slams. I think, you know, everyone thought, um, you know, Djokovic was going to run away with the French Open and he was going to do a career Grand Slam and win all, everything this year. That didn't happen. Yeah. You know, Stan Wawrinka came in and kind of spoiled that. He'd done it a couple of years back with the Australia Open as well. He's my wild card for it. I really do think that he could sort of throw an apple into... Sorry, he could throw a spanner into all the works here. And I think... Now, you look at it. Nadal is going to be ranked sort of 7th or 8th. Yeah. So one of the big boys are going to get Nadal in the quarterfinals. No one really wants that. Federer is doing well, but, you know, Federer is, you know, gets the semis and that's kind of it for Federer. He doesn't seem to like to go to five sets anymore. So if not Djokovic or, or Murray don't win it, I think Marinka or even maybe Nishikori could... Could maybe run a march really? and install this. I do believe so. I've got a name for you that I've been peddling for a few now. Joe Wilfred Songer. Yes. Has he got a chance? Because I think he's looking really strong at the moment. He is, and he says that, um, you know, he likes the hard courts, but he's always said grass is his favourite um, surface as well. He could do it. He's been out of sorts recently. Um, you know, he didn't play uh, many grass tournaments leading up to this as well. Didn't really have a great French Open or Australia Open or Australian Open. So he's out of sorts, but on this surface, you, you never know. He knocked Federer out a couple of years back and went on to the semi final. So you never know, Joe Wilford Songa. But I do expect one of the big boys to win, if not Nishikori or put your money on it, Robinko. 
I like it. I love it when you put your money where your mouth is, Eddie. Yeah, it's it's yeah. really good. It's interesting as well because this week there's quite a big tournament happening in Nottingham and a lot of the big boys have chosen to sit that out. I think mm. they're thinking, no, rest, rest, rest. Because mm. actually it's easy to get injured playing tennis, isn't it? It's strange that you'd think that, but it's Especially one of the easiest on the sports grass to as well. Um, you know, there isn't, it's not like Wimbledon where you've got a roof for the rain. So a lot of people are risk. you know, it's very risky with the glass. You do slip a lot. They don't want to get injured. I can understand why they're all... It's like they've all spoke to each other's agents and said, who's yeah. playing? Yeah. No one's playing. No one's playing. And everyone's just getting ready for Wimbledon. And like you say, it's one of the most open ones there has been. Um, Djokovic hasn't played any grass tournaments so far, so he's looking ready. Boris Becker says what Murray is the big threat to him. So that's interesting as well. A little well, bit yeah, started what do you already. think about Boris? I mean, as a player, he was phenomenal. As a mm. man, he seems incredibly likeable. But mm. what's he like as a coach? Did you rate him? I don't know if he's there as a coach. I think when you're as good as Djokovic is, I don't think that you need someone to tell them you know, where to hit their forehand or backhand. I think it's just mentally for these players. And, and Boris Becker was one of the strongest mentally you know, in terms of a tennis player. So I think he's there just to kind of whisper in his ear, you're this good, you're that good. Yeah. Don't worry about what the others are doing. So I think that's motivation exactly. rather than, oh, you exactly. want to put a bit more spin on it. Or whatever. There, there you go. And I think the same for Maresmo with, um, with Murray. They're not really there as coaches, more just there as kind of motivationals and whispering in your ear and say how good you are. But like I say, it's an open tournament, starts next week, and I think it's going to do very well. They're almost like caddies. In theory, because that's what they do. I've seen them. You know, they do carry their, their rackets and their balls, and their, so they do all that stuff as well. But it's going to be a great tournament. Love it, love it. And I know who you're putting your money on. We'll find out if that happens or not. Ade, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for coming in, my man. Good Cheers. skills, beautiful. Thank you.